Cool. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay, so we have um, a... Everybody here? I don't know how many people are joining. Well, we'll just give it a few minutes. Say, okay. uh, start at maybe 10.35. Okay. And so there with background noise, is that better? Yeah, it's a bit better. Okay. Okay. Where did my mask go? There it is. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So we have a new testing framework for um, Istio.io. Well, well, you're, you're extremely loud right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, is that better? A little better, yeah. Okay. Any technical issues? Okay. So we have a new testing framework for Istio.io, which will allow you to um, allow us to automate the um, testing of the examples on the website. Um, so the framework lives in Istio slash test slash integration um, slash Istio.io, Istio or rather the tests. And there is a readme here that will demonstrate how to actually go about writing tests. Um, so this meeting is kind of to discuss the um, overall framework um, writing a test as well as um, answer any questions that you have for hopefully writing tests for this tomorrow during the testing day. Okay, so to get started, let me pull up an example. If I go to security, um, MTLS migration test.go, this is a test for um, the MTLS migration, which is task security mutual TLS migration. Okay, so if you look at the MTLS migration page, um, you start with a variety of uh, kubectl apply commands. Um, the curl command, go through and execute a variety of steps on the 
command line, the testing framework echoes this. So if you look at the MTLS migration test, um, you can see that there are various inline commands here um, following an order from the Istio IO page. Okay, so to write a test, um, you have the main test.go file here which will actually create a um, environment according to the Istio um, testing framework. And once that environment's created, you can go back to the MTLS migration or whatever test you have and actually go about writing a test. So we have a test function here um, with a framework new test. This is all set up right here. Now we go to run, which has um, a builder and then various steps that you can add. So you call add, you call istio.io.command. Um, uh, you can do inline, you can do YAML scripts, you can do um, a variety of different things, which I'll go over in the readme in a second. Um, you can stack commands on top of each other and assemble as you normally would when you would uh, run through the example. And at the end, you call um, build to actually run your test. Um, yeah. Right. So just so, to, to kind of expand on that. Uh, so basically, yeah. all, all this, this whole new framework is actually just a very thin wrapper around the existing test framework. So you can see the everything that's framework dot is the way our integration tests look today. Uh, there's, there's really nothing different there. We're just we're just this this builder is doing nothing more than building. The test function that gets run by the test framework. Uh, so yep. that's literally all it's doing. It's just uh, it's just the, the steps that it's adding are just literally things filling out a function that it will eventually be run by the test framework in, in the run command. So there's, there's really not much to it. It's just uh, just fundamentally just uh, you know when that function gets run, it, it actually just executes all these te steps in order. It's it's pretty straightforward. Yep. Okay. So now if we go back to istio.io, um, here's the documentation that we've written up on how to actually um, create a test. So um, the overview, I kind of went over that already. You've got a couple of includes that you need to include. You need to create a so test main. Oh, continue. Quick, Brian. Uh, could, yeah. could, we, could we actually go to that output section? Because I think that's, that's probably the most interesting bit to, to see what it, what it is we're trying to do here. Yep. Uh, if you look at the output section, um, so what what a, a test uh, generates is uh, there it is. Yeah. So so th this is basically what a test generates. Uh, the, these snippets are actually in a form that's digestible from Istio IO directly. Uh, actually, if you go to that Istio IO syntax link real quick, we can just yeah. show them like what we're actually doing uh, with with this output. Yep. That that might be useful. Um, yeah, so snippets. So this is this is actually like if somebody were manually authoring a page, they could actually like make a text file somewhere uh, that actually has these snippets defined, and then you can actually link to these snippets from this DOIO uh, pages, and and uh, we'll actually just generate all that uh, content for you. It'll it'll highlight like you know cube cuddle commands. It'll uh, it'll change uh, links to uh, GitHub, GitHub links to actual links when it actually generates the HTML. Um, so, so we're actually just taking advantage of, of these of the syntax here. Um, so the snippets we generate um, are just easily digestible. And and uh, Martin wrote some scraping logic from its UIO that just grabs all the stuff, generates the content, and and uh, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's it's super easy. Um, anyway, that's about it. Okay, so um, as Nathan just said, um, the output is the um, snippet here. Um, going back to writing actual tests, you've got a variety of options. Um, as far as including scripts, you can um, embed them in line directly in your Go file. You can reference a path as you would on the SDIO website, um, and you can reference paths relative to book info itself. Um, it supports scripts, it supports YAML files. Um, yeah. 
Um, you can also do things like wait for pods to start, and you can run defer functions as well. So if you have a cleanup step that needs to run um, at the end, even if a test fails, there's uh, defer embedded in here. And yeah. So I, I have a couple of questions, and yep. um, the, the first one is from the perspective of someone writing a new task, for example, what are we expecting folks writing a new task to do in order to create a test for this framework? Like, what would that flow look like? Let's say I just created a new task, I have uh, several commands, I have a couple of YAML files that I need to apply, Yep. What would that flow look like? Okay, so as a user writing the documentation, you come in, um, you create a test, let's say the MTLS test right here. You don't need to change the way that the de um, environment is deployed, then you don't need to worry about the test main. Um, you just come in and write your test here, um, create the framework, new test, run, and then you add all of your individual steps, whether those are YAML scripts, whether the or, yeah, YAML files, whether those are scripts, um, whatever those will execute in order, and then you can verify each of the steps. Can you um, can you load yeah. the PR that I submitted yesterday that, that has the example markdown file that goes with this? Yep. <laughs> okay, so the, okay. the file is in the security. Yep. Um, you're looking for. Yeah, so this. <coughs> okay. Right. right, so we, you just replace the, the inline text block with a reference to the, the generated snippet file, uh, and then which snippet within that file to display, and it just gets inserted. The, the test infrastructure determines uh, or specifies what the type of that data is, so whether it's YAML or Bash or whatever. So the right color, the right syntax coloring happens on the website uh, automatically. So you end up with just deleting a bunch of files from the task and moving them uh, into the test uh, instead. So, so there, there's a process that's needed here, similar to what we do for reference docs, where the snippets file needs to be retrieved somehow from the Istio IO, Istio, Istio web uh, repo world into Istio IO. Uh, and so we'll have some nightly job or something to do this automatically, just like the reference talks. So is that path correct for the tests, though? Uh, examples slash, that's where the tests will be generated by the test framework, correct? That's where they'll be dumped by the copy, the synchronization process. Okay. So yeah, if so I'm writing the test, the test will just be in the flat directory. I think we'll, the, the file is going to be different. Uh, Nathan had a different name there. The tasks underscore something, ta uh, doc task security mtls dot snippets dot text. And, and, and if, say, I'm trying out a task that has the, uh, the commands written this way, um, will a make serve on istio.io resolve this so that I get the commands from yeah. those paths? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, okay, if we are trying to test manually, say, an uh, individual step just to double check or maybe we're changing something in the text and we want to try things out. I just want to make sure that there's the option for us to get the actual snippet that belongs there. Um, I, I while say, developing. I you know, maybe you have to do the manual sync of the file, right? The first time. Yeah. Yeah. Until the file actually gets checked into Istio. Istio? Correct. Yeah. So the, 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 the truth, the source of truth here is going to be tests in the Istio repo, and then once in a while we'll synchronize the output into the Istio I.O. repo. Yeah. So there's nothing magic here. There's just going to be a text file checked in into the Istio I.O. repo that has all the snippets. Uh, so if you're trying to coordinate between two repos, you can you can definitely just change the text file in Istio I.O. and see what it looks like. 
independent of, of the tests uh, in Istio, the Istio repo. You just have to know that the next time we synchronize the content, whatever local change you've made will be replaced by whatever came from this new issue. OK, that's definitely something we would have to document in the contribution guide so that people are aware that that will be overridden. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we can uh, actually, uh, Nathan, if you could add at the top of the snippet file a comment that says, this file is auto-generated, do not edit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, uh, what about the the process, like the document uh, process that require uh, additional step in the beginning? Let's say, for example, the book info app has uh, um, a first step that would be uh, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but that would be uh, configure like uh, follow the installation installation guide, for example. So. You would have uh, either a mini cube or whatever other uh, installation you want. Uh, how do you do that? So going back here, I believe the Auth Z example shows that. Um, no, or not here. It's main test. Okay, so when yeah this. Kind of demonstrates it. Okay, so um, when you call this framework.new suite, the setup on ENV will actually set up your environment for you with whatever components you need. Um, this setup config is an optional parameter that allows you to say, hey, you know what? I need um, Galley, I need Pilot, um, if you only need specific functionality. And you can actually come in here as well and change the um, Helm values IEML that gets deployed. So in this case, um, Grafana is enabled, um, and by default it's not. So that'll get it um, deployed. Okay. Do you have a, Do you have a list of uh, possibilities here of the configuration values and? Uh, this, this, is, this is just the test framework. This has nothing to do with with uh, with the Istio IO testing. So this this, yeah. is, this is just the test framework we've been using for probably a good solid year now. Okay. Uh, because I, I, like if we are tying this process to uh, the community testing and then trying to replace uh, the manual testing by automated test, I, I'm uh, I'm just like pointing to the, the to the question that is going going to come first, which is uh, uh, how do I make sure that uh, all the tests starting with the installation guide are following the exact same path, and are we uh, are we testing like all the different uh, kind of possibilities, like including mini cubes and other environments? So, so, so yeah. So I guess uh, I, I guess your your question really wasn't so much about setting up uh, the the test, uh, rather rather actually uh, testing it testing both Minikube and uh, GKE options, uh, which which I'm not sure we necessarily have an answer for right now. Um, we we have we have yeah, what Brian is showing right now. We have this option to uh, to actually run different things if you're configured for Minikube or not. But I'm not sure if uh, if our jobs actually run with Minikube on Pro. Um, I I'm maybe maybe John or, or somebody uh, more familiar with what we're doing on Pro uh, could answer that. But uh, I, I, I theoretically it's possible that we could generate documentation for both, uh, but we would have to run. On, in both configurations on Yeah, file. in fact, we probably should run on the three supported Kubernetes co configuration yeah. and Minikube. Yeah. Right. Uh, John, well, are you on? Uh, no, John just left. He had another meeting. OK, that, that's that's something we can follow up uh, with later on. But, uh, yeah, thanks. And, and, and this this framework is going to evolve as well, too. So uh, what, what it yeah. supports will we'll, you know, expand as we go. Would it be worthwhile to have some generic, uh, like in, on the website, we have some fairly generic, uh, like do this thing first, and then here's the, the test. Do we want to capture some canonical, here's the standard way to prepare for an SDIO security test or whatever, <clears throat> so that everything is, is, just, is just one function call, set it up this way, set it, everybody set up the same way. I, I would agree with that, Martin. The thing is, I think our tasks also need to be rewritten in order to take advantage of having, say, a singular initial setup for uh, 
security tasks, uh, signal our initial setup for traffic management tasks that we can then have tests for. The way the tests are written right now, right now they, they, they do share some boilerplate, uh, particularly in the prerequisites, but they are still not synced in, in a way that we can harmonize like you're describing. But that's definitely something I would like to strive towards, for sure. Yeah, and I, I think I think this is this is the beginning of that rewrite, fundamentally, yeah. right? Like now that now we've got this this kind of like automation in place, uh, now let's start applying it. And as we apply it, I think we're going to see a lot of a lot of uh, room for improvement in the docs. Yep. And there's a lot of rewriting that will need to happen too, just to make sure that we are grouping commands together in a way that makes sense for the tests that are being built behind the scenes. So that, that, that actually uh, brings me to another point that uh, I guess part of this meeting is, uh, hey, why don't, why don't everybody uh, kind of chip in and help write these tests or rewrite yeah. these tests using the new framework? Because it's new and shiny and, hey, isn't it cool? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I, I'd love for us to, do, to figure out if we can track how many of the tests on this year .io actually don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, uh, actually in, in, converting, in converting some of these tests over, uh, I actually found some documentation on this .io that was not quite right, like outputs didn't actually match. Uh, so yeah. so it, it's, it's actually a, a fruitful effort already. So I have some in the MTLS migration that I found that I need to fix. OK, so that's two tests we've converted. <laughs> I was predicting a 20 to 25% failure rate. It might be closer to 80%. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I have another question, and this is regarding um, configurations. A lot of our tasks have uh, configurations applied in the kubectl command. So you will see that a lot. That you have a bunch of YAML after a kubectl command with all the configuration values. Are we, it, it, with the new framework, are we uh, recommending now that folks put those configuration in separate configuration YAML files so it's easier for us to reuse across multiple tests? Or do we still want to allow people having configurations applied after a kubectl uh, apply command? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Yeah. So you will see kubectl apply, and then uh, the start of a YAML file, all the configurations, the end of a file. Yeah. And that's just yeah. applying the configuration within the kubectl command without creating a YAML file for it. OK. And my question is, are we still allowing that, or do we want folks to move towards more having kubectl apply this by configuration.yaml, and then having this is my configuration.yaml stored along the test so that we can reuse it across multiple tests, say for configurations that will use, or, or for, for commands that will use the same configuration. I'm thinking here of applying the configuration and deleting it, for example, instead of having to have this huge YAML both times that you just have the, 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 the YAML file in the command. I, 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 I kind of feel like that maybe that's beyond the scope of this particular meeting. I mean, that's that's yeah. that's uh, how how we want these tests to look in the end. Um, I, I I think that's something we can discuss going forward as as we rewrite some of these pages. Okay. The framework supports both right now. I mean, you can have external YAML files, you can have external scripts, and reference them. Okay. Yeah, so we can talk about that in the not working group. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anything else then? Are we ready to go? Hi, this is Len. Sorry, I joined a little bit later. Uh, really good work. I just want to find out how do we know which tests are automated and which are not for people who is interested in helping out? Oh, so yeah. I, so, uh, oh, go ahead, Brian. Sorry. I was just going to say, I haven't seen the spreadsheet yet, but my understanding is the 1.4 spreadsheet has a, another column to document what has tests already. OK. And how do we surface that to our user? 
I assume we don't expect them to go through the spreadsheet, or is this something we intended to surface to our user? To what, what do you mean by users, Lynn? Like yes. when user using Istio.io, would we be considering providing no. some type of status to say, hey, last time we validated this page was against particular release, if we can do that automatically down the road? Well, I, th I think, uh, I think built into any release process. It, it, it's whatever is on Istio.io would be for the current release or something potentially slightly newer. I, I, th I think that's to be determined exactly what we're showing on Istio.io. Uh, so there was thought of like maybe we show like the output of, of a nightly build, for example. Like I, I think that's something we can probably discuss in the working groups exactly when, when we surface this to Istio.io. But, um, but yeah, I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think users care uh, I, would, I think users do because uh, they find out some of our page works, works, some of the page doesn't work because we have like hundreds of pages now. Well, the goal, the, the goal is going to be that all of the pages are tested so that they all work, right? Um, right. But I'm just not, because if we have a way to surface that as we progress this, that would be really good, I think. Like just, just so like a banner of this page is tested? <laughs> yeah, like, like this page last tested was 1.4. Oh, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. uh, we, Lynn, I, I think that's a conversation worth having in the docs working group. There are things that we can do, like badges, for example, of this page is automatically tested. This page was manually tested. I think there are certain things that we can do, but I think that again goes towards the docs working group okay. and the conversation to be had there about how we are signaling to users. Uh, the result of the the tests that we now have on the framework, like that's a, a conversation we couldn't have until the framework was in place. So now right. that the framework is in place, we can start having that conversation of how do we signal to our readers, hey, this page was tested automatically, manually, or not at all. Yeah, I, I, the, the, there's sort of the PR aspect of this. <laughs> Or yeah. having these pages on this dial that explicitly called out as this is not tested. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a great uh, signal to send, but it's reality. So that's why I think it, it's worth having a separate conversation about. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, thank you guys. <clears throat> Well, thank Anything you very much for uh, Nathan to doing to doing this work. This is going to be very helpful. Yes, thank you, Nate. Thank you, and thank you, Brian, too. Yep. Right. Well done. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Later. Thanks. Later. Bye.